Hi, everyone. Well, we're down here recording some programs responding to a variety of issues dealing with Christianity and Islam. And this morning, I took a look at my news feed and saw this. And I noticed that all the stories that are trending this morning are about Roseanne Barr. So I went ahead and looked up what this story is about and found out that Roseanne had sent out an offensive tweet. And let me go ahead and read it. She said, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby equals VJ. She's referring to Valerie Jarrett, um, who was an advisor to President Barack Obama. Now, the tweet is kind of silly. Um, there's uh, Jarrett uh, holding a cup of coffee. Um, I don't know why you'd look at this and say, uh, you know, this looks like a cross between the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes. But people were rightly upset um, at what Roseanne uh, tweeted. She has defended herself saying that she was on uh, Ambien at the time. And um, I I'm somewhat sympathetic to that because I have taken uh, Ambien before and sent out messages. In fact, um, one of them I actually sent to uh, my friend Sam Shamoon here. And uh, I, I sent him a, <laughs> I woke up the next morning and I saw a, re a response message from him. And I, I was like, I don't remember sending him this message, but uh, I looked and saw what I had, what I had written. And uh, it, was, uh, it, it was all like misspelled and grammatically incorrect. And I was uh, sending him a message saying, hey, I got an idea. Uh, what if we took your head and uh, covered it in shoe polish and you did a video where you're the black stone on the side of the Kaaba and you tell everyone about uh, the black stone. And his message was, cool, let's do it, right? And I was like, what? No, I'm not going to do that. But uh, I had sent that message out while I was on Ambien. So you can say things that you don't actually uh, plan to do. Although now, uh, yeah, I don't know, I, I might do that someday. Um, so somewhat sympathetic, but people are rightly upset that this was a uh, ridiculous thing to say. Um, her show has been canceled on ABC. Um, so there, there, there is some, some, uh, some genuine outrage, and that, that is well-placed for sending out a message like that. Uh, she has apologized, so the question would be, you know, how quick people are going to be to forgive her. But for those of us who study the Muslim sources, another question arises, namely, why do people get outraged when someone like Roseanne Barr says something like that, something um, that, that at, at least on its face, seems racist, seems like it's an insulting, seems like it's insulting a class of people? Why do people get outraged at that sort of thing? But when it comes to Muhammad and things that Muhammad said, things that the Quran says, if you bring them up. Not only are you not allowed to criticize Muhammad based on the things that uh, he said, but you're the evil one if you bring them up. You're the evil one if you <clears throat> point out a problem with something that Muhammad said. So just to give you a couple of, of, of examples here, and then uh, if, uh, if Sam and, and Al want to um, jump in with, with some examples, they can do that. But uh, chapter 98, verse 6 of the Quran says that Jews, Christians, and idolaters are the worst of creatures. So we're the worst of creatures. The three of us here, along with all other Christians and Jews and idolaters, we're the worst of creatures. We're lower than pigs. We're lower than dogs. And the Quran elsewhere, in chapter 3, verse 110, says that Muslims are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. So think about this. Muslims are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. Jews and Christians are the worst of creatures. We're lower. We're, we're worse than insects. Now, if Roseanne Barr or Donald Trump or anyone else today were to say something like that, people would be outraged. But if we say, hey, here's a problem because Muhammad said it, many of the same people who criticize Roseanne Barr would call us bigots for complaining about Muhammad. So according to the Quran, Jews and Christians are the worst of creatures. And Muhammad said in Sahih al-Bukhari, I mean, not, uh, Sahih Muslim, that he would expel all Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and not leave anyone except Muslims. He wanted a purely Islamic population. Now, if Roseanne had said, I will expel all black people from America, or I will expel all Muslims from America, that she would expel an entire class of people from America, 
people would jump all over it, and if she still had a show, her show would, would have been canceled for that. And yet when Muhammad says that, again, not only are, are, are we not supposed to criticize it, but we're bad if we bring it up. So can we think of any other examples like this? Sam, what do you, what do you think? Almost well, definitely. In fact, there are at least three passages in the Quran where Muhammad said that Allah transformed Jews into apes. And in one of those passages... Wait, like her comment about planet of the apes? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. In fact, if you interpret that statement in light of the Quran, all she was saying is that a group of Muslims impregnated a group of Jewish women. Because according to the Quran, Allah transformed Jews into apes. And in one particular passage, apes and swine. Let me read that one. <clears throat> Chapter 5 of the Quran, verse 60. Say, shall I point out to you something much worse than this? as judged by the treatment it received from Allah, those who incurred the curse of Allah and His wrath, those of whom some He transformed into apes and swine, those who worshipped evil, these are many times worse in rank and far more astray from the even path. That was chapter 5, verse 60. The two other references, for those who want to take notes, mm -hmm. is chapter 2, verse 66, and chapter 7, verse 166. Ironically, we're told in some of the most authentic collections of narrations attributed to Muhammad, that Muhammad initially thought that Allah had transformed Jews into rats, but then later on by inspiration, he was corrected uh -huh. and was told they were actually transformed in tapes. In fact, let me just read that. <clears throat> Here it is. This is Sahil Bukhari, volume 4, book 54, and in the old numbering, we know that they've updated it, they've changed the, the numbering system. <clears throat> the old numbering, which you can find online, is number 524. The Prophet said a group of Israelites were lost. Nobody knows what they did, but I do not see them except that they were cursed and changed into rats. For if you put the milk of a she-camel in front of a rat, it will not drink it. But if the milk of a sheep is put in front of it, it will drink it. I told this to Kaab who asked me, did you hear it from the Prophet? He was incred you know, incredulous that Muhammad would say this. I said, yes. Kaab asked me the same question several times. I said to Kaab, do I read the Torah? In other words, yes. And then the translator has a note. It says, later on the prophet was informed through inspiration about the fate of those Israelites. They were transformed into pigs and monkeys. So he's wrong about the rats. But then Allah said, no, no, not rats, pigs and monkeys, right? So according to the Islamic <clears throat> interpretation of Roseanne's words, all she was saying was that a group of Muslims slept with a group of Jewish women, because the plan of the apes would be the plan of Jews, mm -hmm. according to Muhammad. Now, th this is interesting because uh, just imagine that instead of uh, her tweeting, Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes had a baby, and that equals Valerie Jarrett. Imagine if she simply said that uh, Valerie Jarrett's um, ancestors had been transformed uh, by God into apes and pigs. Yeah. Uh, would that be any better? Would people forgive her for that? Would she still Definitely have a show not. if she had said that? And the answer is no. People would immediately recognize that as problematic and her show would have still been canceled. So why is it perfectly acceptable for Muhammad to say these kinds of things, but when someone today says it, it's beyond criticism? I mean, it's, it's, it's open for criticism, but when Muhammad says it, um, it's beyond criticism. So, Al, are you thinking of any uh, examples here? Well, I mean, I just want to, uh, you know, piggyback on what you uh, guys have been saying. I mean, it's amazing that uh, Roseanne is a human being, just like the rest of us. Uh, we're all, you know, uh, bound to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. But what both of you have read so far is inspired, supposedly, by a deity, by God. In, 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 in other words, people are holding Muhammad and Allah to a much lower standard yeah. and holding normal people to higher standards exactly. when it should be reversed, right? Exactly. We should be saying, okay, Roseanne's a, a, a comedian. She was on drugs. <laughs> okay, she was wrong. We'll jump all over her. Um, we can take whatever steps we need to make sure she doesn't do that sort of that thing again. Correct. But she's a human. Human beings do dumb things. Yeah. This is inspired scripture from Allah. Allah says exactly what he means. The, uh, Allah can't get away with, hey, I was, uh, you know, I was doped up on Ambien during that time, right? So there's no, no excuse I mean, for Allah. I, I could right? not find a verse about Ambien, so I can tell you if he wasn't. <laughs> nevertheless. Even in Arabic? Absolutely. Okay, even in Arabic. Uh, nevertheless, you know, uh, the thing is the Quran always commanded also Muslims to obey Allah and the Prophet. So and the, whatever the Prophet says, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, uh, we've uh, heard from Sam right now just making reference to a hadith. So I have a couple of hadith here, uh, one hadith at least, that will make you feel disgusted. You know, for instance, the Prophet of Islam is trying to teach on obedience to leadership. Mm -hmm. Look at the example he used. 
And we find this, for instance, in Sahih al-Bukhari, uh, number 7142. It says, narrated Anas ibn Malik, Allah's messenger says, you should listen to and obey your imam, the imam in this case is a leader, even, notice, even if he was an Ethiopian slave whose head looks like a raisin. It's almost like he's saying, even if he, if he was one of those worst looking yeah. people. Yeah. He's trying to give an example, uh, like mm -hmm. the most extreme example of someone you would still have to obey. So the right? example he used, someone from Africa. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, if, if Roseanne would have tweeted this, I wonder how people would have reacted. Yeah, even if she were like, uh, like, like, like making a comment about leadership, right? If she said, hey, everyone, you keep criticizing Trump, but we need to make sure that we always obey our leader, even if it was Valerie Jarrett, whose head looks like a raisin. If she had said that, would she have been any better off? Would, would she not be in trouble right now? Yeah. Well, David, it gets worse. If we go to Ibn Ishaq, who wrote supposedly a biography about Muhammad, in page 243 of Ibn Ishaq's English, of course, uh, version, we read the following. It says, the apostle, referring to Muhammad, said, whoever wants to see Satan, okay? Mm -hmm. Whoever wants to see Satan. So we know what Satan looks like now. Yep. Okay, go ahead. Yep, look, look, look who looks like Satan. Let him take a look, he says, at Naptal ibn al-Harith. Who's Naptal ibn al-Harith? He was a sturdy black man with long flowing hair, inflamed eyes, and dark, ruddy cheeks. That's how Satan And looks. that's actually in the text. It says what it means by saying that he looks like Satan. It says he's a sturdy black man with inflamed eyes, right? Exactly, and it's kind of funny because the Quran uses uh, dark or blackness as an example of those who will be punished in the hellfire. The hadith mm -hmm. always refers to African, you know, basically, or dark skins to uh, use it as the worst of examples. In this case, like uh, we showed uh, about mm -hmm. who is the imam that you still have to obey, even if he was someone like this. Mm -hmm. And now we're seeing that Satan even looks like that. And so if, uh, I, mean, I mean, just again, imagine the situation if, if instead of the, the tweet that Roseanne actually uh, sent, she had instead posted something saying, um, if you want to know what Satan actually looks like, if you want to know Satan's actual appearance, look at Valerie Jarrett's face. That is what Satan looks like. Um, would she be in trouble? I, I think she still would. I think people in any circumstances would recognize the problem with saying these kinds of things, but we suddenly turn to Muhammad and there's no problem with it. And not only is there no problem with it, you're not even allowed to criticize it or you're the bigot. Now here's what I find most interesting. Um, people on all sides are, are, are condemning what Roseanne said. So people on the left, people on the right, uh, people from everywhere are condemning this. And rightfully so. Yeah, yeah, absolutely rightly so. But when, um, when leftists, when the far left jump on things like this, these are the same people who will defend anything Muhammad said from criticism and will attack you for criticizing it. And the reason I find this so interesting is, why would you take a white American woman, and if she says something, then you, crit you condemn it. But if a seventh century Muslim said something similar or something even worse, you're ready to defend it to the death and attack anyone who criticizes it. The reason is, they're just holding Muhammad and his followers to a much lower moral standard than they hold anyone else to, right? So they hold white Westerners to one moral standard and Westerners in general, different races, they would hold them to one, one moral standard. But Muhammad and his followers, Muslims in general, they hold to a much lower moral standard so that um, if Muhammad says something that anyone else would be condemned for, it's okay for Muhammad to say it and it's okay for his followers to say it. And so why I find this interesting is, um, Roseanne is being attacked for something she said, and people view themselves as defending the, the, the class that was criticized or made fun of in her comments. And yet these same people hold an entire class of people, Muslims, to a far lower moral standard, viewing them as inferior, viewing them as on the same level as animals. And this is how the left treats Muslims and thinks they're honoring and respecting them by treating them like animals. I say no, ladies and gentlemen, and for those of you out there who would hold Roseanne to one moral standard and hold Muhammad to a much lower one, hold Muhammad's followers to a much lower moral standard, um, I agree with your criticisms of Roseanne, but if, uh, if Muhammad's getting a free pass, I think you all need a new moral compass.